Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Hey, I know for many of you around the country, especially back there in the middle of the country and the East Coast, you probably think that the entire West Coast should just probably fall off the face of the continent. And you'd have good argument for that. Why is that? Well, it's because every one of the states out here on the West Coast is working feverishly to disarm its citizens and to quash any sense of constitutional rights and liberties that one may have. Well, except for one state, because there's one state that actually has the exact opposite playbook. And it's a reason why I'm kicking around with logos such as this or maybe this. So today, Let's spend a few minutes. Let's give an attaboy to a state that's actually sticking up for the rights of their citizens. And let's talk about Idaho, the last bastion of freedom in the Western time zone. Okay, quick reminder that this video is being brought to us by North Idaho Arms in beautiful Post Falls, Idaho. That's right, go by and see my good friend BZ and his brand new gun store located right here, just about one or two exits inside the Idaho state border. Now, hey, listen, my boy BZ managed one of the most successful gun clubs in King County, Washington for a number of years. He finally decided to get out of the People's Republic of Washington. He's moved back to the United States of America. He is right there in Post Falls, Idaho. So stop on by, see my good friend BZ and all the great people at North Idaho Arms. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. Everything out here in the West Coast is complete garbage, which is true, except for the state of Idaho. And what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is not one, not two, but three separate bills that the Idaho State Legislature has passed that will in ultimately be signed by the governor, enacted into law. And it really goes to show that unlike what's happening in Washington and Oregon and what's been happening in California for a long time and New Mexico and even to some degrees in Arizona and Colorado, we see in a lot of gun control measures and a lot of those, no, the state of Idaho is actually using the exact opposite playbook. And for that reason, we're gonna give them a big old attaboy. Cause as we mentioned here at Washington Gun Law, when you're not Washington state, Really, the only way we're going to end up covering you is one of two ways. Either one, you've done something so rotten, so nefarious, so sinister to your citizens that we deserve to alert the entire country about that. That's not what's happening here. Or number two, you're doing something so totally awesome. You do deserve some kudos. And that's what we're going to give the state of Idaho today. Senate Bill 1374. This would actually ensure that all public property in the state of Idaho is no longer a gun-free zone. Translation, you could actually carry your lawfully owned, lawfully possessed, lawfully carried firearm onto Idaho public property. Now, there will be a couple of exceptions to that. And the exceptions are if it's an invite-only type of event where people have to have a ticket for admission or something like that on a public event. And it has to be well known to the public that, hey, this is not open to just anybody, but only people who have been invited here. The law will specifically read, any restriction on the carrying of concealed weapons pursuant to this subsection may only be invoked for public property owned by the state or its political subdivisions when the use of such property is for private event by invitation only, for a commercial event that charges admission, or for any other event with restricted access whether admission is charged or not. For any such private event, commercial event, or other event, it must appear to a reasonable person that the general public does not have unrestricted access to the designated public property or any subset of such property that is normally and habitually open to the public. Now, the next piece of fantastic legislation is Senate Bill 1291. Now, we have already talked about that bill on this video right here. Now, this is a bill that essentially says, hey, listen, the state of Idaho is not going to be doing business with any company that is engaged in political activity that is either meant to thwart or quash out Second Amendment rights of citizens or which is targeted at the fossil fuel industry. That new law will specifically read, 
A public entity may not enter into a contract with a company for goods or services unless the contract contains a written certification from the company that it is not currently engaged in and will not for the duration of the contract engage in a boycott of any individual or company because the individual or company A engages in or supports the exploration, production, utilization, transportation, sale, or manufacture of fossil fuel-based energy, timber, minerals, hydroelectric power, nuclear energy, or agriculture, or B, engages in supports the manufacture, distribution, sale, or use of firearms as defined in 18-33022D of the Idaho Code. And then the third piece of legislation, and we've already talked about this one as well, is Senate Bill 1317, which will now provide Idaho residents with the option to obtain a Gadsden flag license plate. And better yet, the additional revenues raised from this sale of this license plate will actually go to firearms safety courses and funding of that in Idaho schools. Now, there's one other bill that right now seems to be kind of stalling out a little bit. That is House Bill 415. That would allow certain employees of schools, including teachers, under certain conditions to be able to arm themselves so that they could be the first responders in the event of a terrible incident which occurs at an Idaho school. Currently, that bill is sitting in the Senate Affairs Committee and appears to just not be going anywhere. I think everyone in Idaho should very carefully watch Senate Bill 415. I think you also might want to get on the horn or get on your computer and start sending some messages to your legislators, especially those in the Senate, about getting this thing back out of committee and back onto the floor for a vote. So the bottom line is, for all the terrible things that happen out here on the left coast, for all the civilian disarmament measures that are taking place in not only my state, but all the states up and down the west coast, there is one state, there is one state that is absolutely hell-bent on preserving the constitutional and inalienable rights of its citizens, and that is the great state of Idaho. Kudos to the state of Idaho. Kudos to the Idaho State Legislature. Congratulations, I envy you. And one of these days, we very well may turn on YouTube and see that this channel is called Idaho Gun Law. Listen, if you got any more questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights in any state not named Idaho, You guys should know how to get a hold of Washington gun law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information's down there in the description box. Finally, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.